Okay, so now that we have uh, we've covered the 3D Perlin noise or the 2D Perlin noise, let's go ahead and talk about 3D Perlin noise. And we're just going to make it out of our same Python component that uh, created this. Um, let's uh, disconnect it first. Oops. And we can get rid of this this stuff. And uh, so we're going to pass in be passing in three values. Uh, well, here, let me open it up and explain. So right here, this is a 2D noise. So if we want 3D noise, we do noise 3. And then we pass in, uh, instead of two values, we're passing in three, three values. So we're going to do um, k times scale z, and we're going to uh, do k in range z okay and we don't want to add a point Oops. okay so um, it's the, the same idea that uh, Perlin 2D noise is, where you pass in two values and then you get out a similar value. Um, instead, we're passing in three values. And so um, with that value, um, it wouldn't really make sense for us to, because we're passing in a point off of a 3D grid, uh, what we can do um, is that if that value is between a certain range, We'll add a point, and uh, it'll be clear more uh, later on. Once we get this kind of made, I'll talk about it more. So um, we need a lower value and an upper value. Value. So if um, our Perlin value is greater than our lower limit, and our Perlin value is less than our upper limit. We are going to add a point, and we're going to add that point at our i, j, and k. And let me see. Okay. So we need to scale our Z. And let's just put these, give these the same place. And our type hint for that needs to be of integer. And type hint for our Z needs to be a float. Okay, so if, even with 10 values, we're going to have a thousand points. Uh, so, and let me see. Let's test this. Uh, lower limit, we need our lower limit and our upper limit. And these are going to need to be floats. And let's just use this. Uh, per land, oh, <laughs> uh, per val. Okay, it says it's completed successfully. So are we getting any values out? Okay, so here we have our uh, uh, what it's returning. So um, just to reiterate, uh, 
what it's doing is it's going through um, this we created this 3d grid and uh, it's testing uh, the Perlin value at each of those points and if the Perlin value is below our upper lower limit and above or if, if it's below if it's above our lower limit and below our upper limit then it's adding a point at that that position so let's scale this down Yeah, you can kind of see that there's kind of some, you know, kind of some clustering like uh, like we had uh, in the, the two-dimensional example. And uh, down here I created uh, a little thing that uh, puts a mesh box on uh, the point. Let's show that. Let's hide that. Okay, so I'll explain what it is, does. Okay, so first um, I created a box down here and uh, uh, I made the box one by one by setting this at 0.5 for each of those values. I made a, I turned that into a mesh box um, with uh, uh, one face uh, for each of the sides. And then I moved this mesh box to each of those points. So, so I thought that would be uh, give us a more clear way of looking at this. And. Play run. Okay, so there we have something Perlin like. And that's preview, custom preview, and swatch. Well, that's hard to see. Oh. Okay, so basically, uh, this will is kind of the window into th uh, three-dimensional Perlin noise, and like our last example, we can use that Perlin value uh, to do uh, whatever we want with it. Um, uh, we could do a similar thing with the circles on this, uh, or you know whatever you want. But and uh, now that we have this as um, you know a bunch of meshes, we could unionize this uh, and then delete the inner edges and apply some kind of smoothing so it's not um, as blocky as it is. Uh, but this uh, this gives us something basic to uh, to play around with. So, uh, so I hope that's uh, that's useful.